Why doesn't your Wi-Fi router appear in your available connections list? You didn't change anything and it worked just fine a few minutes ago. So what happened? What could possibly have changed? Looking for the solution? Stay tuned. Hi there, it's me again. I wanted to start today's video by thanking everybody who liked and subscribed to my videos uh, so far. Um, and also to mention how great it was to interact and chat to some of the people who commented on the, on the other videos. I really appreciate it a lot and I'm looking forward to seeing where this journey takes me. So far it's been a lot of fun. With that, let's move on to today's subject. A funny thing happened to me last Tuesday. But first, get yourself some coffee, have a seat and I'll tell you all about it. Wi-Fi routers are something that a lot of people never really think about as something that can give you problems. But on Tuesday, mine gave me a five alarm doozy of a headache. I booted up my steam powered video editing PC to update some files on my laptop across the home Wi-Fi network. And for some weird reason, the PC decided to act as if it had no internet connection. Now the router still seemed fine and so did the Wi-Fi dongle on the PC. It showed all the other connections in the area, but just not our router even though it was right there where I could see it. All the right lights were doing their little flashy things and we were still able to do our other online stuff on our other devices at the same time. It took me about four hours to finally identify the problem and then to figure out a solution to it. And I decided to make this video so that it doesn't have to take you four hours and a five alarm headache to solve. No matter how many times the Wi-Fi connection was turned off and on again, or flight mode was engaged or disengaged, this didn't solve the problem. I tried restarting the PC and even the router itself to see if this would solve the problem. Many people just plug their Wi-Fi routers in and connect their devices to them without ever configuring or changing settings on the router. In fact, like the saying plug and play applies to most modern tech, when it comes to Wi-Fi routers, it's more like set up and forget. Most of the time, home Wi-Fi routers don't ever get turned off. They even come with backup batteries or mini UPSs these days. So they just stay on day after day until they eventually break or get replaced. Sometimes though, if my router has been on for a long time, it might slow down or just generally drop our internet connection. And this is easily fixed by rebooting the router. And it's a good idea to reboot your router regularly to prevent these things from happening at inconvenient times. Like when you're in the middle of a Fortnite or a Minecraft event. About once a week sounds like a good plan to keep your swear jar empty. This was the first thing I thought of trying when the problem surfaced, but in this case it had no effect. Another thing I tried is to press the tiny reset switch on the router. Usually it's hard to get to and sometimes you need to use a pin or an unfolded paper clip to press it. And this will reset the router to its factory settings, including resetting the admin password to default. This is useful if you can't remember your password or if you happen to acquire a used router, say from a garage sale or a gift from a friend and you can't get into the settings because you don't know the password. But it didn't help me in this case either because the most of the router settings were already on default. I've never experienced a problem quite this baffling, so I tried all sorts of things, from combing through the deeper network settings on the PC, running a ping test of the router, which worked from my laptop but failed from the affected PC, and then I wondered if the USB dongle was faulty. But still, it detected other Wi-Fi connections in the area, so how could it be? I couldn't test it by connecting to the listed Wi-Fi connections because I didn't have their passwords. I mean, they belonged to my neighbors. Was there a problem with a router? And since our smartphones and my laptop were all connecting to the internet via that same router, how could that be faulty? It was a real mystery. So I set out to do some troubleshooting machine. I tested the Wi-Fi dongle in another PC just to be sure, and that gave me exactly the same result. And at the time it was starting to look like it really was a faulty USB Wi-Fi dongle behind this. But then I dug out an old netbook out of the spare cupboard to make sure. And when that one demonstrated the exact same problem, but this, one, this time with its own onboard Wi-Fi card, it only made my headache even worse. So either it was a hell of a coincidence that both devices had gone faulty at exactly the same time, or there was something else wrong. 
But what? Then I scoured Google for advice and information, but that didn't help at all. All I found was the generic and un unhelpful, plug this in, move your PC closer to the router, check if it's turned on, update your drivers, etc. sort of stuff. And after about three hours of this frustrating nonsense, I was pretty sure the problem lay somewhere else on the router. But what was it? Since some devices were picking it up loud and clear, while others weren't, I was pretty much at a loss. But I didn't give up. I experimented by disconnecting my Android phone from the router and having it forget the router. And then to my surprise, the router didn't show up on the phone's Wi-Fi list either. But after a few moments, I was able to get it to reconnect to it again. That confirmed to me that it was something to do with the router itself. The problem wasn't physical, so it had to be a setting of in the end though, this problem turned out to have been the result of an assigned address conflict between several devices on the router's connected devices list. I solved it by connecting to the Wi-Fi router's software manager, which I accessed through a browser on one of the PCs connected to it, and I'll be explaining how in a moment. IT and computers are funny things, and at times they seem almost alive in the way these things can just give you trouble when you least expect it. I have no idea what could have happened behind the scenes that could have caused this problem. But at least after about four hours of late night fiddling, swearing and frustration, I was able to find a solution and made it into bed just before midnight to have a peaceful night's sleep. Okay, I'm going to switch to my computer here to show you what I did. I'm going to start by connecting to my router software manager. If you're experiencing the same problem I did, you need to do this with a device that's still connected to your router, either wirelessly or via a cable. There are different ways you can do this. You can use a smartphone, a tablet or a PC depending on what sort of router you have. Either will do, so work with what's connected or what you're comfortable with. Some routers offer downloadable apps to use to manage your router and they should all be very similar but at bare minimum all you need is a smartphone or PC connected to the router and an internet browser. Now the problem you're experiencing might be preventing your devices from accessing the router at all. So you might need to use a PC or laptop that's physically plugged into the router with an RJ45 network cable to do this. Because routers generally manage direct cable connections differently than devices connected to them wirelessly. They don't ask for passwords for example, and you should be able to communicate with the router in spite of the Wi-Fi problem. Either way, the process of, of accessing the manager software is very similar, using an internet browser. Usually the manual for your router will explain the process of connecting to the management software or the website to you. Or it may even have the necessary info on the sticker at the bottom of the router, including the admin password and provide the IP address to enter in the browser. But we'll assume you don't have that with you right now, or the sticker has come off or become illegible, or the dog ate it, or whatever. But that's not as big a problem as it sounds. Usually Wi-Fi router IP addresses are on a spectrum of 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.8.1 or similar with small variations between manufacturers or models. So you could Google your make and model router and look for its DNS server address or just cycle through a few of these IPs in your browser until you hit the right one. Or you could do it the easy way and look it up on a PC that's still connected to the router. Let's do that. Don't worry, it's not difficult and it won't take long. You need to open your Windows settings, let's do that first. Then go to Network and Internet. And then click on Wi-Fi, where you should see the currently active Wi-Fi connection. Click on the connection, which will open the settings for that connection. Then scroll down past your IP settings to Properties. And look for the item labeled IPv4 DNS Servers and look at the IP address beside it. See that? That's what an IP address looks like and your devices use that address to connect to the Wi-Fi router. Highlight that, then right click and copy. Now that you have the IP address, open your browser and then paste it into your browser address bar like so. And then you should get a welcome screen and logon window like this one. Your router's manual usually explains what the logon details are. Usually by default there's something simple like username admin and password admin. But if you've changed the password in the meantime, you need to use the new password you created. This website may look like a regular website 
you'd find on the internet, but it's actually running on your Wi-Fi router, not on the internet. You don't need to worry about unauthorized personnel getting access to it via the internet because you need to have a device that's already connected and logged into your router and internet access point to be able to do that. In order to get access to this built-in website page, a device not connected to your router would have to be physically somewhere in your area close enough to be in range of it and the user would have to first hack your Wi-Fi password which is why it's always a good idea to use strong passwords for your Wi-Fi and for your router admin point. Okay, so once I opened the software manager of the router, I basically went through all the settings that manage the Wi-Fi aspect of the device, and it was a matter of trial and error before I found the problem. I changed something which didn't solve the problem, and then I changed it back and try something else, until I finally found the thing that worked. As you can see here, the router's broadcast channels are set on automatic and somewhere along the line there's been some sort of conflict with some of the devices connected to the router. This can cause the router to not detect some systems trying to find and connect to it. In fact that was partly explained when I disconnected from the router with my phone and tried to find it again. And now the big moment, the solution to the problem. What solved this problem was to change the settings for the broadcast channels from automatic to a specific number listed in these two drop down lists. I started with the numbers at the top of the list and planned to try the others too if they didn't work, but it did. And as soon as I saved the changes and the router restarted the Wi-Fi service, all my devices could then find the router as before without any difficulty at all. And that's that. Another case solved. Hopefully this video will save somebody hours of searching the internet for a solution to the same problem and having to sift through all the misdirected generic static out there. Otherwise, even if it's just FYI, I hope you find this bit of information helpful. If you did, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this video and say hi. Leave some comments and suggest what you want to see more of. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you very much. And see you next time. Bye.